So, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, we like to start off with our disclosures. Any stimulus you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all of your money. Any strategy we use today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan for Saturday, July 9th, where we're going to look at the economic calendar. Uh, we will review the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts for the market leaders. We're also going to look at dollar, gold, and accrued oil charts. And we have education spotlight at the end. So what was the week that was? Well, our three major indices all ended up for the week, uh, just modestly. Uh, we had five out of ten sectors gained for the week, led by technology once again. We also had some good numbers out of retail as they had strong same store sales. Overseas, we had Moody's downgrading the uh, debt for Portugal to junk status, and China raised its, uh, once again their one year lending rate. But of course, the big news of the week uh, was not on the corporate side, it was on the economic side, and that was Friday's non farm payroll was a meager 18,000. And that was after ADP on Thursday was so positive um, to, you know, again, sometimes ADP has a, a direct relation to non farm payroll, sometimes it doesn't. Unemployment also ticked up uh, a tenth of a percent to 9.2%. So you can see 18,000 is nowhere near the 80,000 that they were expecting. And the market literally dropped 20 points right at 830. And that really was much of the move. There wasn't uh, a lot of smooth trading after that. you know. So the move was pre-market, which is a reason people need to consider something like futures that allows you to take advantage of those pre-market uh, announcements that options and stocks do not. Going into this week, we are kicking off our next uh, quarter of earnings. We've got Alcoa after the close on Monday. Later in the week, we've got Google uh, and JPM, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, on Thursday, JP Morgan. And then on Friday, we have Citibank. As far as economic news, we've got the minutes for SMC on Tuesday. We've got uh, Consumer Center on Friday. Bernanke speaking on Wednesday after this bad jobs report. Maybe he'll speak on that. Uh, last in June, we had a bad jobs report and then Bernanke Spink, and that was the whole down move in June. So maybe we'll see something similar. Let's go to the charts and take a look. Okay, so we're starting off by looking at the S&P 500 on a daily chart, and we can see, you know, here was our June bottom at the 200 moving average, and then we moved right on up. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And this is what we watch, we're watching at the end of last week. Still going to extend it out. We may come back and test it. Don't know. Um, and so Monday took us right above that, and that was our breakout. And then you had to watch towards the end of the week, we had to watch this swing high, which we fractionally broke, but we closed right back down at. So we're watching two things, I believe, here on the S&P 500. Uh, first, obviously, we're looking at the past swing high, which is at 1370-ish. And then we're watching this swing high here, which is at 1344-45-ish, which is basically where we closed on Friday. So are we going to pull back to the 10 or the 20 moving average or even test the backside of this downturn line before going to test 375, 1375 or or 1370, or are we going to just head lower? Don't know. What we can see on indicators is that uh, stochastics are saying we're overbought, RSI is overbought, MACD is getting that overbought. So our shorter time frame is overbought. A pullback is in line. As we and and really Friday was the the beginning of that. As we scroll out to our larger time frame on the weekly, we can see what one week, the last week of June did to the whole June move down. And so what will be interesting uh, is to see we have a, a sort of inverted hammer here, Doji-ish. Uh, will that push us a little bit lower? Now, our weekly is kind of mixed. Um, we, we got an up move here on Stochastics. 
RSI is a little bit towards overbought. MACD was overbought heading lower, and now it's positive. So our weekly is giving us mixed signals. Let's zoom out one more time to the monthly on S&P 500. And we can see, um, you know, our May moved down, our June moved down, but June is a hammer because of that last week. And here we are moving up here in July. Now our indicators on the monthly are overbought heading down. So we do have somewhat of a dual time frame agreement. Our daily indicators and our monthly indicators are showing the same thing of a potential move lower. Let's go check out our industry leaders to see what they're telling us. Okay, so we're going to start off with Apple here. We'll zoom in a little bit and we can see this downtrend line that Apple broke out of. Does that look very similar to the market? The market broke out. Um, and so uh, I believe what we talked about last week was the fact that Apple closed at the uh, downtrend line and we certainly did blast right on through it. So Apple certainly looks bearish. Let's zoom back and see uh, where we are in terms, look at where we closed. This 360 price level is our wicks from back in February. So um, the question is here, uh, is this really a double top? Is the market setting up a double top for a pullback? Um, certainly strength in Apple. Let's go to Amazon. Amazon said, to heck with a double top. We're making new highs. Look at that. Just beautiful, just beautiful. If you're going to look at Amazon, uh, you can try to, you know, draw something like this, an uptrend line. It's so parabolic. It's so just straight up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens when it actually does break that. But so, you know, again, Apple at a double top, certainly bullish. Uh, Amazon making new highs, definitely bullish. Uh, let's go to Google. You know, we didn't mention in our corporate news, we said there was nothing, nothing that moved the market, but it is important to note that Google was downgraded on Friday. How about that? Uh, I believe Morgan Stanley downgraded uh, Google with a price target from 645 down to 600, saying that they're hiring a lot of people and their social media, uh, Google Plus started. Um, is going to weigh on their budget and on their finances. So Google was downgraded. But like Apple, here's Google breaking out. Still has yet to get above the 200 moving average. So it's it's nice. And you can see the gap down. Um, uh, but we're below the 200 moving average. So I'm going to go mixed on Google. Let's go to uh, Goldman Sachs. Here in Goldman Sachs, we do not see Goldman Sachs participating. Sure, we got a little move here, but you can see the majority of the week was hovering around a 20 moving average. So uh, financials have to participate to really see us move higher. And we can see this range that Goldman Sachs has been in since May. So Goldman Sachs not participating certainly does concern me a little bit. Certainly does concern me this a little bit as you know as far as the banks leading the market. You know, and since we have JP Morgan leading this week uh, as far as earnings, let's take take a quick look at that and see maybe we see something there. No, I mean we did rise up, but again, sideways action dying at the five hundred moving average. We also have Citigroup this week. Let's see. Um sideways action still below the two hundred moving average. So our financials are not really, yes, they moved with the market, but they didn't blast up like the market did. Uh, how about Netflix? Netflix made a new high this week, like Amazon. So there's another one, Amazon, Netflix making new highs. And finally, Priceline. Uh, not a new high, but testing, like Apple, the past swing high. So we've got Apple, uh, we've got Priceline, potentially double tops, Goldman Sachs, all the banks did not participate, Google went up. Um, you know, so I would say sideways to up. Uh, you got to pay attention to whether or not the market is setting in a double top or are we going to break and make a new high. As we begin to look at the dollar chart, there's one important thing to note. Uh, so two weeks ago, we were like, look, 
the dollar is right at the downturn line from two years and we thought the market was going lower that's when the market was at the 200 moving average and we bounced last week we said oh look the dollar is um, about to break lower um, uh, and of course uh, that didn't happen so one way or the other this wedge here has to resolve itself um, and that's going to affect the market so if the dollar breaks higher and that double top on the market will probably fall back now what's interesting is that as the dollar is ri rising you would think gold would go down however gold did not as a matter of fact gold and the dollar rose together now gold is still in this pattern here also double top heck you could say it, triple top in here uh, but it's in this larger range so we'll have to see what happens around 1550 ish uh, will go uh, pull right on back. We can see our point of control is 1528. So that's within um, our, our auction area here. So gold certainly looking strong, but we it, it's approaching the past resistance price level. And crude oil um, has basically rallied since uh, the strategic uh, release. You can see it broke uh, our downtrend line and made its way back up to 100. So remember, this was the auction area we were watching before, 102 down to about 96. So we'll see what's going to happen here. Is it going to go back and, and consolidate in this range uh, or what? And probably, again, what's going to happen with the market. And keep in mind, we have some, we do have some catalysts this week with earnings. Um, you know, and the market can re, uh, react one way or the other to what they see out of the company's earnings for this quarter. As we move on to the education portion of our video, uh, one of the things we've been talking about what separates winning traders and losing traders, and we talked about trading plans, we talked about discipline, we talked about focus, and another key thing about being successful in the market is actually having a realistic goal. You know, people come in with $500 trying to make $500 a day. Um, you know, uh, the market can be profitable and can make a lot of money, but in the end, it's not a get rich Ponzi scheme. Um, take your time, do your discipline, and you will be able to profit from the market. But again, it takes having realistic goals, it takes having a strategy which your money can afford you to have. Not only uh, the profit, but the risk tolerance. No need to having a trade that's going to blow your account on the first uh, uh, trade. So, um, having realistic goals definitely can separate winning traders and losing traders. You can find our videos on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Our page on Facebook is Are You Financially Literate? Investing in Personal Finance Advice. You know, uh, we've got a great free five port video course on high probability trading, how to develop your own personal high probability trading setups which lead us to our mentoring program. Uh, it's one thing to recognize the setup, it's another thing to be able to act upon a setup. And our coaching uh, uh, works with you one-on-one -on -one to develop a personalized trading plan and help you work on that trader's mindset to be a successful trader. Uh, our future trading room that we're recommending last week uh, made over $500. Monday was a little interesting, uh, but overall it was a profitable week. 20 free trades, intraday margin, low as $300, and a charting package that works both on PC and Mac, all the scans that you need uh, to find the hot stocks of the day. In the end, it's not about the system or the indicator, it's about the trader's mindset, and that's what our coaching is all about, and that's what you need to have in order to be a consistent, profitable trader. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.